Howdy and welcome. I'm Mike, your board gaming every dude. This is Board Games for One. Today we are going to be learning how to play the initiative and we're going to follow up with a review. I have played through the 14 mission campaign, so I've got a few things to say about what I've been able to play. First of all, check out the box. Pretty much we're told exactly what this game is very accurately. Story, strategy, and code breaking. Those are the three things that I would pick. So let's look at those and then we'll look at how to play. Feel free to skip around by going to the different chapters. First of all, story. This game revolves around the comic here, The Initiative, in which you follow four teenagers who find a board game that they buy at some kind of a thrift shop from a rather shady type of guy. They take it home, they start to play it, and they start finding riddles within the game, and the game starts getting intertwined with their real life. Kind of Jumanji-ish, but not quite. As the game progresses through the campaign, you end up unraveling little bits and pieces of your characters. You've got the four teenagers here. Well, those three of them. There's four. There you go. That's the story. Then we've got the strategy. The strategy comes with the actual board game play where you are moving a character around on a board and the strategy comes in with how you use cards from this deck to play your actions. We'll get into that shortly. Then comes code breaking, which is the highlight of this game in my opinion. I love the code breaking. And that comes in where you are collecting clues that have little symbols those little symbols let you flip up different matching symbols on this little code breaking card here. I won't spoil too much. And then when you get enough, you want to try to guess, either guess the phrase or it gets more complicated where you may be looking for a sequence of numbers or it may be a combination of codes that you have to break or it might be layered codes where you break one only to find it to be nonsense, to find that you have to scramble through some other code somewhere you found in the comic to something on a board in who knows where. So code breaking goes in multiple levels. It does not get stale or boring. Sometimes the strategy can. We're getting into the review. Let's skip that. All right, those are the different parts. So first of all, how to play. First thing you do, you go through this very, very easy one, two, three, and four page instruction booklet. Since there's not a lot there, I still kind of struggled a little bit on my very first play, but after 15 or 20 minutes, I had the game played down pretty good, at least I think so. After you read that, you start in the comic book. You go to what, the first page that you're directed to go to in the story, you read it, you enjoy it, and then it tells you exactly what to do. It'll tell you something like, begin mission one. So you'll read the story and mission one, you go to your mission deck, take mission one and you slide it into the code machine here, making sure that you can't see the answer. And then you begin playing the game. So let's switch the camera and see how to play. All right, for playing solo, since it's a cooperative game, you only need to pick one character. You do not need to control more than one hand. So I have picked Pratha Saini. Each character has their own special ability. You have three other characters to choose from. You can see your teenage character and the character that they play in the board game. Then you deal yourself a hand of cards. So you've got a deck here of action cards you put right here. Next to that, you put your discard pile, with the blue side up, and four watches. I only put one, but there's four watches put in here. Then you lay out your four actions, your regroup, your gather, your intel, and your run ability. Then you take, according to the background here, it tells you how to set up the board. It tells you how many files, for example, two files to put in this section or three piles here. It tells you where to put the door. You place your character where the door is. There may be other instructions like here. It tells us to place one wall where there's a green dot. So I grab a wall or a break in the wall and I place it wherever the map tells me. 
There are plenty of other symbols and files used throughout the game. There are villains, but we won't go into any of that because those all get revealed and explained as you play. There are more instructions than are here, and they're not in here, so you're going to have to look for them. It's a pretty cool moment when you find them. All right, so our board is set up. We've got our secrets that we don't have access to over here. Throughout the game, you'll gain access, and when you read the comic or when you decode certain things, it'll tell you take secret 15 or secret 1. Those secrets might contain tips. They might contain special abilities. They might contain many other things. They might contain more codes to break. They might teach you how to break a code. You never know but you try to collect as many as you can. All right, so you're ready to play the game. Your goal is to decode whatever it is you're being asked to do. In mission one, you're asked the simplest thing, what is the key phrase? That is not how all the missions run. They get very interesting. You might be looking for patterns or you know any number of things. All right, so you lay that out. That's what we gotta do. I have four cards in my hand. I have to take one action. I can take up to two before I draw. Since I'm playing solo, I can take one action and then I can pass and draw a card. It's different if you play multiplayer. You would have to take two actions. All right, here we go. One, two, three, and four. You can see there are numbers one for the different suits. Here I've got the green suit and the purple suit. There are two other colors. Each suit goes from 1 to 12. To take an action, you pick one of your cards and you place it on one of the four actions that you want to take. Let's go through them in order. First, let's say that I would like to run. I'm going to take my lowest card and I'm going to put it on run. Move up to three rooms. Okay, cool. I can go 1, 2, I don't have to move 3. And that's it. That's that action. I can pass and draw up to my hand limit if I would like, or I can keep going and take two actions before passing. When you're playing solo, it really doesn't matter so much like it does in the multiplayer game. All right, now let's say I wanna run again. Well, you might be wondering what's the point of the numbers? Well, if I wanna take that action again, I have to place a card that is a higher number than what's already there. So if I had started with a 10, well, I'm in trouble because there's only 12 numbers, right? So if I want to run again, I'll place a two. Cool, that goes on top so I can move up to three spaces again. If I wanted to go again, I'd have to get a higher card and so on and so on. I think you get the point with that. You might be wondering, what do the different colors mean? They do mean something later in the game. You will know when it happens. Same with the symbols. There are, same with things on the board. This board flips over, it has another side. There's more to this board than meets the eye. There are lots of ways to find out all the different uses for everything. But you'll learn that as you play, so I won't spoil it. Okay, another action we can take is Intel. So I'll place my, I'm gonna save this one and I'll show you why. I'm gonna gather intel. I'm gonna choose a room and reveal up to two clue tokens in it. So I'm not gonna move. I'm gonna pick any room on the board. So let's pick this room and reveal two clue tokens. Boom, boom. So I know what's there. I'm gonna look at these symbols and see, do I need either of these up here? Do either of these match? And they don't, but we're gonna pretend that one of them does, okay? We're gonna pretend that one of them does. And if it does, then I would need to move there and take the gather action to actually collect that and flip over any symbol that matched that one. Okay, so that's how you start to reveal what the key phrase is. You don't have to completely reveal the phrase. As soon as you're ready to guess, guess, but you only get one shot. And if you're wrong, then you fail the mission you go back to the comic book and the story continues. It just may be a little different or you may have certain disadvantages or not based on whether you were successful or failed. There is a check sheet on the back. 
so that you can track your success or failure through each chapter. All right, so let's say we wanna do the gather phase. Let's just say, all right, I took two actions, so I have to draw up to my hand three and four. And let's just pretend that I was able to run one, two, three, and what did I reveal? It was this one, right? There we go. And I'm gonna pass so I can draw a card. And we'll pretend that didn't happen because that's not supposed to be in there. There we go. Oh, there's a four, cool. So I'll put that down, move again. Now I can gather. So I took an action, I'm gonna pass. All right, my lowest is a one or a five. I'm saving the one, I'll just tell you why. So I've got to start with a five. This is the strategy part of the game when numbers start getting difficult here. All right, so with the five, I'm going to draw my tokens. You'll notice these tokens don't just have the black and white symbol, like this blue symbol here, and there's an orange symbol. They actually have meaning and actions that go with them. Don't worry, the game will tell you when you get there. I won't spoil it for you. All right, so I'm gonna collect gather, collect up to two clue tokens from your room. They don't have to be revealed. They could be revealed or not revealed. It doesn't matter. You just have to collect from the top to the bottom. So I'd put those to the side, flip over any matching symbols on my clue board there. All right, so that just leaves the regroup action. What on earth is that? Well, the regroup action, make sure my clocks are on there. The regroup action, draw up to my hand of four, allows me to clear one of these decks. So let's say that run had gotten up to 12 and I just need to clear it. Then I could put a one and I could choose any other action card and discard all resource cards and tokens on it. So I could discard all of these, put them on my discard pile, and I can start fresh again from the run action. I can start with a low number and go up. Here's the thing, you can never clear the regroup pile. There's no way to do it. So if I started this with an eight, well, I can only place a higher number to keep regrouping, and then you're gonna be in trouble. So you want to regroup with as low a number as possible. Save those low numbers for when you need it. But I'm down to three. Let's go through one more possibility. I can take my character's special action. All right, and depending on how you play the game on your successes and failures, there may be more than meets the eye, the eye to this um, special action. Keep that in mind. But I can discard any two cards to activate my special action and every character, they have instructions on exactly what to do. So you can always do that. That's one action, but you have to discard two cards in order to be able to do it. Something else you'll run into are some of these tokens are actually traps. Actually, a lot of them are. Everyone has a symbol. You start out with four symbols and the instruction booklet has a nice little key that tells you what to do each time you uncover a trap. Sometimes they have an effect when you step into the room. Sometimes they only have an effect when you unveil them using Intel. It just depends on the trap. And as you progress in the game, you'll find out there are more traps than you may have thought possible. All right. But what happens then when we've used all of our cards from this deck and they're either out here or discarded? Well, what you would do is you would leave any cards that are out here on here. And when you're ready to discard, you lift this up and you shuffle in the clock cards that were on here shuffle them all in and you start yourself a new deck and you flip this over to the red side it tells you discard pile in peril so that means we've been using a lot of time we haven't guessed yet so if there are three or more time cards in the discard pile you lose the game so i'm going to draw one at a time one oh see i just drew two clocks on the first one that's two times if i draw one more the game ends and I do not get to try to guess that final phrase. So right now I need to just guess because if I draw a clock like that, which that's because I didn't shuffle, it wouldn't happen, but this is good for uh, explaining, then the game would be over. All right, so you gotta watch out once these time cards 
come out. What else am I missing? All right, so yeah, let's say you did this, you guessed the phrase, and so you'd flip over all of these to see if you were correct. And then you go to the back here and you write down if you were correct or not. So chapter one, it tells you read page one. We did that. After mission one, read page 17. You mark whether you won or lost and just keep track of that. Sometimes there's instructions where it'll tell you if you lost, go to page, blah, blah, blah. If you won, go to page, but not always. So in that case, we'll say that we won. So it says after mission one, read page 17. So we'd flip to page 17. We would read only that, follow the instructions. Sometimes it tells you to flip to new pages. Sometimes there's code breaking in the comic while you're reading and you learn about the different characters and all of their struggles. But that wraps it up for how to play. Let's go to the review. First of all, the components. The box is good quality. The components here are good quality. The only thing that I found is that these cardboard pieces, the standees, are a little bit thick. So they got a little bent up pushing them in. Not a big deal, but they're totally sturdy. Great, sturdy, sturdy. Board is nice and sturdy, no issues. This is sturdy. These don't like accidentally get stuck or flip the wrong way. The cards are a good thickness. I have no issues at all with the cards. The artwork, I actually do enjoy the kind of washed out look of the artwork. You can see there and there. And even these, you know, they're a little on the washed out side and I do tend to prefer vibrant colors, but the symbols are easy to understand and they make sense as you start to play the game, exactly why they picked it. So super easy to catch on as far as the uh, graphics in telling you how to set up the board, super easy to follow. No issues with that at all. So as far as components go, you get your money's worth. It's easy to read and play. How about the gameplay? Is it fun? Do the story and the code breaking and the strategy elements work together? Well, the story and the strategy and the code breaking, they do work together, okay? It's not jolting. You do go from reading to then playing a board game to then going into decoding phases. They, they go together. However, I do think that the gameplay part is actually my least favorite, which is okay because most of your time, believe it or not, most of your time, at least my time, was actually spent code breaking. That is not to say there's any flaws to, to point out in the gameplay. The strategy here is actually stressful and difficult and you do really have to, you're never gonna reveal a whole phrase. You have to strategically decide, you know, which ones are worth flipping and which ones aren't and give your best guess. And if you cheat by Googling it, it's pretty cool. This game knows and you'll know what I mean when it happens. Um, I didn't do it, but I thought about it. And if you do, the game knows and there is a consequence. It's pretty cool. But I do feel that the moving around, even when the villains come into play and add different elements, it did get a little stale. Not stale enough that I didn't finish 14 missions though. So um, my thing is basically, I could actually deal with a game just of the code breaking. Just the stories and the code breaking would probably be enough for me. I could actually do without the gameplay part. But again, that's me. It's not It's not, not that it's flawed. Okay, going into the surprise. So there are a couple moments that really made me, actually there were a handful, several moments that really made me smile because of how clever this game makes you interact off the board. You have the board, you have your code breaking, you have your comic, and then you have more. This game takes you outside the box and inside the box and around the box. You get my point. You are doing a lot that you are not expecting to do, and I loved it. The story is family friendly. 
It is very heartwarming. You are dealing with four teenagers who have their own personal battles and you're helping them overcome those battles while uncovering the secret of, you see the blanked out part, the blank initiative, figuring out who that is and why on earth do they want these kids and what's up with this board game that they found that's like coming to life. So cool story. Downside, um, the story can be a little flat. The characters can be a little flat. You know, there's no major surprises. You can guess what's coming, but it's okay. There are a lot of stories you can guess what's coming and they're still good stories. So you're not going to get anything groundbreaking, nothing highly emotional. It's just, it's clever, it's cute, and it's fun. Is it the proper length? Yeah, each mission is anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes. The later missions in the game might push an hour depending how much analysis paralysis you get in or how hard it is to decode. In a couple of them, I decided to sleep on it and come back to it the next day instead of fail. Um, and it worked, it worked out well. But anyway, I think it's an appropriate length for each mission. And the 14 missions actually felt about right. Like I was ready for the story to be where it needed to be at the end of the 14 missions. You do have gameplay beyond the campaign. And from what I saw on Board Game Geek, people do play. And it's not just playing for no goal. There are actually additional secrets and decodings to collect and use for those extra missions. I didn't really have an interest in that. I'm a story person. So once the story's done, I'm done. So I haven't played any of those extras. I can't speak to them, but it seems people on Board Game Geek really enjoyed the challenge and that there are even more intricate puzzles than you're gonna deal with here. So taken away from that, I recommend this game. I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy it too. It's around $40, I believe, $40, $45. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Thank you for sticking around. Be sure to check out this next video that I made just for you. I love you all. See you next time.